九亿美元，或者是每股零点七三美元，在没有任何重大的增长项目的情况下，该公司还向呃股东拨回了大量的现金。让我们深入了解所有现金的来源。拉斯维加斯金沙仍然是澳门市场的主导地位，澳门市场仍然是全球最大的博彩市场。总体而言，澳门本季度博彩收入增长百分之十点二，这是我们判断所有博彩公司的一个基准。拉斯维加斯金沙集团在澳门威尼斯人和金沙城中心地区。表现非常的强劲，收入分别增长百分之二十二点一和百分之十五，推动澳门本季度收入增长百分之十三点一。与整体市场相比，这个表现非常的强劲。值得注意的是，澳门金沙的收入增长了百分之十二点七，这与澳门旧澳门半岛地区长期下降的收入正好相反。新加坡滨海湾金沙酒店是拉斯维加斯金沙集团最赚钱的度假胜地，其季度比该公司所希望的要弱，但其业务多年来一直在下降，收入呢下降百分之二点九到七七点六六亿美元，其中赌场收入下降百分之八点七，但是房间的收入增长百分之十二点八。食品和饮料的收入增长百分之十五点二，因此度假村的需求依然非常的强劲。与澳门和新加坡相比，拉斯维加斯的结果看起来很贫乏。但是，如果你今天拥有拉斯维加斯金沙集团的股票，你应该关注公司主要地区的现金。现在他们都在做相当不错的呃业绩，希望他们能继继续的坚持下去。b r a s h i e l 宣布召开新的会议，亚洲区块的链周将于十一月二十七号到二零一八年的十二月一号在新加坡举行。区块链和加密货币会议呢，将吸引一百多位顶级行业领导者和加密影响者，以及超过来自于五十多个国家、两千多名与会者。本次本次的活动举办地点将在新加坡最美丽的地点之一——滨海湾新沙豪华酒店举行。今年在亚洲区块链周的发言人阵容包括加密议员和台湾立华委委员加森徐、IBM 首席技术官、Mars 的全创新主管 Steady Young， 还有 c a n a t i s 联合创始人兼执行合伙人。联合创始人最令人期待的演讲是其中之一，托马斯李先生，他是啊 Foundation g o b e r 的联合创始人和华尔街分析师，拥有超过二十五年的股权研究经验。自一九九八年以来，他一直被评为最佳机构投资者。托马斯李是最早谈论比特币的传传统金融专业人士之一。他以对于加密货币的积极态度而闻名。他最近的一些行情是，到二零一九年底，以太坊将强势反弹至一千九百美元和比特币今年可能爆发性的走高，指的只是将来比特币和加密货币市场的逆转趋势。好吧，那我们看看这是不是真的？也祝大家好运。最后。这是一个多只的花穴，呃，玛利亚·凯莉因在亚洲创下十六亿的销售记录而获奖。他最近在中国深圳的深圳湾体育中心体育馆进行了表演，这是他十一月九号在曼谷巡回演出的一部分。二零一七年，拉斯维加斯，他在这边居住以后，并且获得了格莱美最畅销的女艺术家。Maria Carey 正在对于亚洲各地巡回展开她的演唱会，并且由 Aria Fund 代表 Sony Music 颁发在亚太地区销售的啊十六万亿产品的成就证书。哇，无论是美元还是记录或者是下载，这是一个非常巨大的数字。
。亚洲新闻与亚洲文化联盟联合，向我们所在这个地区的亚洲国家社区朋友提出邀请，将您在即将展开的活动，还有您所要做的一个呃社区的活动，跟我们做一个连接，我们也将为您做一个转播，请将您的活动内容发送到我们的电子邮件信箱 community at。a c t v l v c o m 或者是打电话给我们七零二九七九一三八八，想要获取更多的信息，不要走开，亚洲新闻马上回来。Here at Go Global Realty, we value the relationships with our customers. I'm Michael Ring. I'm the co-owner of Go Global Realty. Wherever you are in the world, you can give us a call at Go Global Realty. And we'll be able to assist you in purchasing real estate in the United States. You can purchase it for an investment property or for personal use. 您好，我是稳赢地产的 Ronnie Chen。希望在房地产的部分，我们有机会为您服务。大家好，我是稳宁地产的。我们公司是一个专精为海外人士。Hello, I'm Joe Lewis. This is Go Global Realty. Give us a call at Go Global Realty. We speak over 12 languages and look forward to helping you in your real estate needs. This segment is brought to you by Asian Cultural Alliance. 各位观众朋友，大家好，我是主持人傅慈礼。今天又到了我们华雅电视台亚洲新闻的名人专访时间。今天我们特别请到我们的啊、呃、亚洲文化联盟总会长冯念祖冯先生来到我们的现场。傅瑶姐，你好！你好，你好，很高兴啊、呃！我们请到了冯先生到我们的节目来，因为在冯念祖冯先生他呢带领之下，亚洲文化联盟的活动是一个接着一个的大型活动，是一个国际主流的一个活动，一直。不断的在我们的啊社区里面一直在发展，那么这一次呢，我们特别请冯先生来到我们现场，冯会长到我们现场来，特别再带了一个非常好的消息给我们大家。哎，冯会长肯跟我们观众朋友介绍一下，到底是什么好的消息？好，各位朋朋友，全世界全世界的朋友，大家好。今天给你带来的消息呢，就是我们很有幸的，我的好朋友在洛杉矶，他是名主持人倪北佳倪先生，跟我联络了以后呢，这几个月来准备准备再准备的，现在已经准备好了，也就我们会有一个大型的歌唱比赛，包括有奖金。包括有那个饭店啦啊，飞机票等等的。那这个活动是属于全世界型的，还是属于全美，还是就拉斯维加斯？这是属于全美性的。全美性。因为我们的合作单位是全美国最大的那个华人报纸，就是《世界日报》。哦 ，OK。那当你讲说全世界的话，因为他们刚刚在那个泰国。嗯哼，也有《世界日报》了，啊，而且他们有网络啦，各方面的话呢，这是属于全世界性了。Actually， 那我们很有幸的，就是说，在这个比赛的那个呃，这个最到年底啊，这个比赛的场地呢是在拉斯维加斯。哦，总决赛在拉斯维加斯，没错。那。所以地点都有出来了吗？全部都好了。嗯哼。那第一个，只要你很爱唱歌的 ，OK，、嗯、尤其是在 Las Vegas 的朋友们、嗯、啊，赶、嗯、快上我们的网站登记和了解细节。那网站呢，名字非常简单，叫做 LV， 就是 Las Vegas Voice。是声音 dot com， 就是 lvvoice dot com。到那里赶快去注册 ，OK。注册了以后呢，里面有所有的方法啦，等等等等细节都在里面。那我希望每一位，尤其是在 Las Vegas 我们的朋友们
能够来和全世全美国来比赛者呢一比高下，因为我最在意的就是 Vegas。嗯哼，所以,所以这一次那您这次、啊、呃亚洲文化联盟所代表的呃这一次的 voice，、嗯、L V voice 或 L A V voice， 我们我们在 Las Vegas 的话呢、嗯、，L V voice 是我们在内华达州了，在 Las Vegas 的所有的人哈、嗯嗯嗯，是在我们这里报名，嗯、是在我们这里参与。Okay. 所以说，内达华州这由我们这边来做一个初选。没错，没错，我们这里。选了以后呢，初选全部选完了以后，嗯、因为在当中我们比较特别的就是说，啊、嗯呃，凡是选出来的人呢，嗯、就会参加我们的像我们的那个亚洲音乐节目 Music Asia 啊、哦，会上台登台表演。您的意思也就是说，初赛的时候是在啊，我、呃、华雅电视台的 Music Asia 里面来竞选。对对对对对对，凡是说学车，就直接上电视了。是没错，我们希望全世界，因为我们现在的节目在中国呢，很有幸在中国都可以看得见啊。所以，我们希望每一个人，他能够只要爱好唱歌的，你知道吧？一个人。或者到三个人的一个团体呢，都来参加、啊。那如果从其他国家的他想要来拉斯维加斯参参加的话，这样子可以吗？也可以。啊、o、okay, k 也可以。那也就是说，我们我我叫做这一次啊，啊是 Vegas 的一个大联盟，和 L A L A 呢做一个 P K 比赛，因为凡是我们参加参加什么东西、啊、都要赢，为什么呢？嗯 Las Vegas 是叫做 Entertainment Capital of the World， 就是世界娱乐的首都，对 ，Right？ 世界娱乐那不能输啊，对，所以要把加把劲儿。是，每一个、啊、每一个每一个来住在 Vegas 的人呢，啊、大家都来加把劲儿，你知道吗？是是是,是。只要造来造造成一个高潮，也就是说。拉斯维加斯的爱唱歌的朋友们，不要落呃失去这次机会，把你们最厉害的东西、最厉害的呃、嗯、歌手、歌声给表现出来。对对对。那么是怎么样一个呃初赛？是要怎么样一个选法？有没有大体呃出来一个 schedule 可以让观众朋友？你只要你只要这样子哈，你只要上网登记了以后，是。然后呢，因为大家都有 YouTube， 所以你可以把你的。声音啦，啊，你的唱歌啦， uh -huh. 录影下来，不需要专业，就是说，就是说你爱唱歌，你可以自己录下来，然后就把它传到 YouTube 上面去。Uh -huh. 登记了以后，对对对，登记了以后呢， uh -huh. 我们的评审会根据根据你的各方面的， uh -huh. 然后会跟你联络。Uh -huh. 联络了以后， uh -huh. 我们不只是就是说上了节目，我们还安排了 Voice Coach， 就专门教你啊，怎么样。因为有很多像我好了，我也爱唱歌，但是呢，那个时候有时候那个音啊抓不准，你知道，总要有就是要总要有专业的人呢来教你，对吧？<笑>那我们特别安排了，就是每一个星星期是在录影 Music Asia 之前会有一个特别的课程，教你怎么样真正的唱歌。哦<笑>，也就是说。在呃比赛之前，我们都还都呃，就是还有专业老师来指导他们。对对对对对。所以我们希望就是说，当然，我们希望各国的人都来参加。嗯哼。但是相同的，就是说，我们希望把这个这个年轻人啦，或不管是谁啊，年纪有没有年龄限制？没有年龄限制，十十二岁以上。十二岁以上。对对对。十二岁以上就可以报名参加，那能够就是说，发掘出、挖掘出啊，明日之星。哦，我相信我们拉斯维加斯应该会对，因为会有星探来的，还有啊，唱片公司啦啊，都会来观摩。哇，你知道这样子呀？那这一次啊，有没有分组？没有分组。这个是凭个人实力，对，一个人或一个十二岁也好，或者是呃一百岁也好，他们就是同一个。把本事拿出来。OK， 没有分。因为唱歌，对，唱歌这东，对对对，唱歌这个东西呢，没有分年龄大小的，就是，各凭本事，嗯啊，把这个把这把你的本事拿出来。那
比较现实一点的哈，就是有没有报名费？没有报名费，这个没有报名费，全部是赞助。嗯，也就是怎么样呢？因为这个所有的开销等等的话呢，会有一些非常好的、非常优秀的商家啊来赞助，所以我们不希望给任何人来参加比赛的有任何压力。嗯 ，OK。而且当天在那个当天在赌场啊，在比赛的时候，来的观众是人人有奖。怎么讲？怎么讲说人人都有奖的 ？OK， 当天会有会有奖包。现在正在很多事情正在进行当中啊，就是说又有飞机票啦，这些比赛的人有这些，然后还有饭店啦啊，饭店住宿啦。也就是说，你意思说呃。进入决赛的人，他有饭店可以住，嗯、对我们住各方面。对对对，我们的合作。我、哦、那这次真的是很对我们的对，我们的合作单位呢，就是说《世界日报呢》呢、嗯、啊，是他们正大力的在在加州啊、嗯、啊筹备当中，你知道吗？就是说希望每一个人能有幸来参加的、嗯、来参与的、嗯，因为你是观众的话，你也可以投票的，嗯、你知道、嗯，然后可以等于是大家都有参与感。啊，然后就是说，人人有奖，嗯，你知道吗？嗯，这个这个呃，这个正在很多很多方面的事情，因为我们、嗯、那呃，就是说总决赛的时候在酒店里面啊、呃、举行，那这个票呢，这个观众的票是怎么样？是上网去买呢，还是说、呃、全部免费？但是但是当天那不是每个抢破头，座位有限呢、欸。先到，<笑>先来，先排队，是，你知道， uh -huh. 有有一部分的人呢有 reserve， 因为是从大佬远来了嘛，是是，对不对？是，但是其他的其他的的话呢，就是先来排队 ，OK， 先进先得，你知道吗 ？OK， 呀、yeah, ，这个这个时间点，嗯，我们会在网站上面公布，嗯，因为有有另其他的细节，嗯啊。嗯因为我们、嗯、我们亚洲文化联盟，一直以来的宗旨就是希望大家都来参与，嗯、参与你知道吗？参与才是最重要的东西，是是,是吧？是这样子，是这个很重要。而且你这个大型的活，这么大型一个活动的话，那你除了呃，我们化呃亚洲文化联盟主办这个拉斯维加斯这边，那还有没有？就是说，谁参与在这个亚呃拉斯维加斯的一个这个活动？拉斯维加斯这边的活动的话，就是我们这边正在招兵买马，等于是，是，你知道吗？所有对于这方面有兴趣的人呢，嗯、都可以跟我们联络。嗯、也就是说，那个跟傅小姐您啊。<笑>打电话联络了，大家来参与，你知道吗？啊、呃，各尽一部分啊，因为这个是大家的活动，是是是吧是？所以我们希望每一年的合作能够越办越好。那呃，裁判呢裁判？裁判都是专业的裁判。那是怎么样一个、嗯？有没有说一个怎么样的准则？因为呃，我们是亚洲文化联盟嘛，哈。那么来参与的人的。语言方面，还有歌曲方面的话，呃，有没有限定说、嗯？没有，歌曲是依照你个人的风格是啊,啊。那如何评分方法，都在网站上面、嗯、啊， okay, 有有分各个不同的评分方式。网站 l v v o i c e c o m 啊，那因为因为在在这方面的话呢，就是说评审来说都是专业评审，嗯，也有各国的。OK，、嗯、那这样的话就是说比较公平起见、嗯。那我们第一个要求的、嗯，我们在合作的时候第一个要求就是一定要公平。嗯、这个是这个是我个人，还有我们整个团体，你知道都希望看到的，就是说一定要公平。对，那也就是说来的人他呃也有泰国歌。有菲律宾歌，对对,对对，然后有中文歌、台语歌、英文歌，什么都有。没错，没错。可是，我就有一个 question 了、啊、哈、嗯，有一个问题就是，那裁判呢？裁判他听得懂他的咬音，还各方面吗？还是他只是以、嗯、因为因为这是一个 question， 对，里面有分为舞台，是唱歌是发音。哦，一个你知道吧？声音，你抓的音准不准？是，对不对？好好好那就像一个
台湾人唱广东歌，对不对？他咬字也许不是非常清楚，但是他的发音整个拿音的准确度啊，是很好的。是是。所以这个是一个综合有各方面的一个累积分数评分。是是是，你知道来一个总结。所以在我们的网站上面就有明确的呃说明，说我们评分的标准是什么这样子。对对对对对，真的是。所以希望就是说，因为我们协会一直以来哈、啊，非常非常非常少在所谓的募款，为什么呢？因为你知道吗？就像现在在竞选的时候，有时候哎呀，见到人家就募款，见到人家就募款了、啊，这种是实在没有什么。我觉得非常的，有点好像有一种祈求，或者是有一种背影这样子。所以呢，嗯，这一次有一个非常好的机会，对，给商家，因为商家呢是支持这个社会的运作，一个底气，一个底盘，因为它取之于社会，用之于社会，是没错，没错。OK， 那这一次的话呢，就是说。我在此呼吁的话，如果您是商家，嗯，对于我们做的各方面的活动呢，啊、嗯哦，有支持的话，嗯 ，right， 嗯，可以跟我们联络、嗯、，OK， 这呃联络电话也好，都在网站上面，嗯，那你可以来就是说参与，嗯 ，OK， 这个东这个这个活动支持、嗯。那另外一方面，你如果说人不在这边，嗯，你也许你的公司在全世界，嗯。我们马上就会公布在网站上面，你都可以登记，也就是说，直接用信用卡，你就可以来来支持这个活动，是让是让所有的人知道说，你的事业对于社会的关心是有一定的支持的，是这个这个这样才好。是，对对对所以我我认诶是呼吁一下我们的商家，或是说我们的朋友，如果愿意赞助这一次的这个活动的话，嗯、我继续我知道这个这一次的赞助上电视的几率非常非常高，除了初赛。三次的初赛，还有一次的呃的复赛，然后还有一次的半决赛，还有一次的总决赛。那不光是这几次，完全是在电上直播，而且也是呃一直网站的宣传，网站的宣传、啊、一直在上面。对对对，因为我们在 social media 上面的话呢，就是像 Facebook 啊等等是。全面性的广告，所以说他们，哎，就是说你付出啊一点点的呢啊的赞助，但是你收到效果会非常的大。这是我们的原则，也就是说，给给之于社会，取之于社会，你知道吗？这是良性的一个一个一个循环，是是是，谢谢谢谢我们冯会长今天到我们节目来，把这么好的消息带给我们各位观众朋友。不要忘了 ，Voice 已经开始在报名到我网站去登记，呃，而且已经快要呃有呃初赛的话会通知你们，很快就要呃。很快就要开始进行了嘛，对对,對，第一次的初赛，网站已经公布了，对，已经公布了，不要不要忘了，赶快爱唱歌的你不要忘了，赶快来登记。今天我们谢谢我们的冯会长到这里啊，时间的关系，说实在，我想说跟那个冯会长一直在讲下去，但是呢，因为时间有限，所以呢，我们啊，下次有机会我们再请冯会长来跟我们再分享更多的好消息。今天我们的访谈就到这里，谢谢大家。呃，不要走开哦，我们马上回来。This segment was brought to you by Asian Cultural Alliance. Buying, keeping, or selling your home is one of the biggest decisions you and your family need to make in your lifetime. Specify a home inspector trusted by the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. F10 Inspection Services has been serving the Las Vegas real estate industry for many decades, which secures all inspections with a $10,000 honor guarantee, backed by the International Association of Home Inspectors. F10 Inspection Services, proudly Asian American. Call 702-374-7377 or visit f10.com now. 欢迎回到亚洲新闻。我们想邀请大家来参加亚洲文化联盟所举办的第二届亚洲文化节。每年的五月十八号被内华达州指定为亚洲文化节。亚洲文化联盟一直是其它主要的创立还有支持者。想要了解如何参与，还有要参加的文化节，请访问我们的网站。
A 型口球对大哦。你可以每天在拉斯维加斯三十点六频道观看我们节目，还有在全球的 A C T V 还有 W C E T V 应用上同步的播出。亚洲文化电视台每周直播，还有组装的电视节目，包括英文，还有中文版的亚洲新闻、亚洲原创内容，以及我们的特色教育过课程。如果想要了解有关这些计划，还有更多的信息，并预览所有即将推出的计划活动。请访问 actvus.com。如果您希望成为我们节目的荣誉赞助商，或者只是想要在频道中宣传您的业务，请致电七零二九七九一三八八。等什么呢？赶快来参与！我是傅慈礼，我们下次再见。Is proud to be associated with Go Global Realty. Here at Go Global Realty, we value the relationships with our customers. I'm Michael Ring. I'm the co-owner of Go Global Realty. Wherever you are in the world, you can give us a call at Go Global Realty, and we'll be able to assist you in purchasing real estate in the United States. You can purchase it for an investment property or for personal use. 您好，我是稳盈地产的 Ronnie Chen。希望在房地产的部分，我们有机会为您服务。大家好，我是稳盈地产的。我们公司是一个专精为海外人士。Give us a call at Go Global Realty. We speak over 12 languages and look forward to helping you in your real estate needs. Your sweet little angel. You'll do everything to protect your bundle of joy. But did you know that using an ordinary baby bottle puts your baby at risk? Does your baby bottle do this? And this, even this. Switch to the amazing zero leak bottle with leak proof nipple, the only patented nipple that can keep your baby safe from accidental drowning, choking, tooth decay, and ear infection. It is equipped with an anti-colic device which protects your baby's tummy. Its wedge collar makes feeding preparation easy. The amazing zero leak bottle is proudly produced in the USA by Mays Corporation. Order now. Call seven zero two eight 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 seventeen ninety eight or visit MaysCorporation dot com. This has been a presentation of VATV. Buying, keeping, or selling your home is one of the biggest decisions you and your family need to make in your lifetime. Specify a home inspector trusted by the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. F10 Inspection Services has been serving the Las Vegas real estate industry for many decades, which secures all inspections with a $10,000 honor guarantee. F10 Inspection Services, proudly Asian American. Call 702-374-7377 now. With the many recent changes and focus on immigration law, now more than ever is the time to seek the help you need from an attorney you can trust. As an immigrant myself, I know the many difficulties and hardships involved in immigrating to this great country. With more than 10 years of experience in handling immigration cases, our firm can provide the necessary answers and solutions to your needs. Call Calderon Law today so we can work together to help you get the peace of mind you and your loved ones deserve. Welcome to Wines Du Jour. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada, as usual, and more specifically, we're at one of our uh, restaurants that we love to come to, but it has cuisine that most people aren't familiar with. Well, that happens to be Filipino cuisine. 
Now, you don't know what Filipino cuisine might be? Well, let me just tell you, it's delicious. You should try it. But one of the things that I'm going to surprise you with is to tell you about the Philippines. And I'm going to do that a little bit later in the program. But before we get started, I want to mention something that I, I was absolutely flabbergasted about. You know, if you go to Japan, there's four uh, different uh, islands make up Japan. How many do you think makes up the Philippines? 7,107 different islands make up the Philippines. <laughs> Pay attention. We're going to have some good food from a lot of areas in the Philippines tonight here at Max's. Now, Max's restaurant started out in the Philippines. It came over to uh, the uh, Nevada area, or actually uh, to the United States, uh, a few years ago in the late 50s. I'll tell you about that in particular a little bit later. But they came to Las Vegas in 1957. I have to tell you, the food here is superb. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people that never even heard of Filipino food. And that's kind of funny when you stop and think about it. Well, we have three great wines tonight and we've got three great foods. One of the things that Max's is known for all over the world is its crispy, juicy, tender chicken. He does it like nobody else, and we're gonna have some of it with a beautiful Chardonnay a little bit later. So come on with me, you're gonna meet some of the people that work here, and um, thanks for watching Wines Is Yours. Welcome back. I promised you uh, to meet the manager here at Max's. She's sitting right next to me. This lady really knows food and she knows how to take care of people. So when you come to Max's, if you have any questions about any of the food or any questions about where's a good place to sit, uh, where is it too cold or where is it too hot, if there is something like that in the, in the restaurant, she knows the answer to it without a question. If the chef's a little confused, they come and ask her. She gets them all straightened out. Her name is Elrica. Pretty neat name, huh? And she comes from where? The Philippines. The Philippines. I guess it should be, huh? <laughs> if you're at a Philippine restaurant. You know, I still am amazed uh, how innocent people are about Filipino cuisine. Uh, they don't really know what it is, and unfortunately, they stand away from it for some reason or another because they don't know. Uh, you talk about Chinese food, you don't realize that there's like nine different areas in China with different types of cuisine. We don't think of that. We think of uh, you know some kind of a, a chop suey or something that's not even Chinese, but it's an American version of a Chinese dish. But the Filipinos, straight across the board, they really enjoy good quality food. How long have you been in the business, Erica? I've been here for like a year. A year. Only a year. And, are you, have you been in the business for a year, or you just came to work at Max's a year ago? I just came to work at Max's a year Max's ago. Max's a year ago. So you've been in the business before? No. I'm in a retail business. Ah, before. so you just came over from the, the Philippines? Or you uh, been here for a while? I've been here for like four years now. Oh, four years. Well, that's pretty good. Well, you, you've lost your accent. That's pretty good. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Most I get it a lot before. Yeah. yeah, I get it a lot before. <laughs> well, you know, one of the unique things about Max's is he originally opened in 1945. And let me just tell you, Max was a very congenial guy. Uh, the war was going on, and there was a lot of servicemen around and he'd get to meet a couple of them, he'd say, hey, come on over at the house for something to eat. Next thing you know, they're coming over, they say, hey, we've been over here too many times, we've got to pay for some of this. So they ended up uh, opening a little restaurant and having people come in and they could pay for the food, and that's the way Max has started. It's a nice little story, and, and that would, again was back in, in 1945. They grew all over uh, the Philippine areas with a number of restaurants, and then uh, they decided, that, let's go to the United States. 
good old U.S. of A. The people like to eat there. Uh, let's go give them some good Filipino food and uh, let them see what it's all about. So uh, about uh, 1982, they opened their first restaurant in the United States. And that's good. They've got several of them across the country. In fact, Max's has now over 100 res uh, restaurants around the world. Uh, that's a pretty good thing. But back in uh, night, uh, 2013, they decided, hey, you can't go to Las Vegas and have a good time without having some Filipino food, so let's open a Filipino restaurant in Las Vegas. And that's what they did. This happens to be, we're talking about Max's restaurant in Las Vegas, the finest Filipino food in Nevada. It is great. How do you know? Come and try it. I've done it, and I tell you, it's good. Uh, being a chef, I can tell you, you know, things that aren't always right on, they're on right on here. And you'll see what I mean a little bit later uh, with some of the food. What are some of the favorite items that you have on your menu here? Um, our most favorite is the fried chicken. It's yeah. um, Max's whole chicken. It's the most popular one. Yeah, actually. well, Max is known all over the world for his chicken. I mean, it's incredible. It's a secret recipe, and I know about nine-tenths of it. <laughs> uh, they won't give me all of it. But I guess that's the way it should be. But, you know, we're not talking about uh, uh, the colonel and his chicken. We're talking about really good grilled chicken that's been marinated, and the flavor is unbelievable. And then what they serve it with is pretty cool. Let me just tell you uh, real quick about it. I discovered this uh, the first time I was here at Max's, and it's a sauce that they make. I don't know if there's a name for the sauce. If there is, I'll tell you a little bit later what that name is. But here's what they have. Number one, they have a product that you can buy in an Asian store, and it's, it looks like it might be ketchup, but it isn't. It's banana sauce. Go figure, banana sauce. Now, you don't just open it and put it on your chicken. What you do is put it into a container, let's say a little bowl, put some, and then take a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, everybody's familiar with that, the war chester they call it in New Orleans, and while you're in New Orleans, you gotta pick up some Tabasco, our favorite. One of my sponsors for over 12 years. Great, great company for hot sauce. And if you mix a little bit of Worcestershire sauce with the banana sauce and then add a few dashes of hot sauce and mix it up, put that with your chicken and you'll say it's the best you have ever had in your whole life. Is that right? I would definitely agree I mean, with you. Everybody <laughs> here, everybody that comes here and orders a chicken, they gotta tell you it's wonderful, yes. isn't it? it I mean, is. it, it stands out, folks, and that's a good thing. Well, we've got to go to a break. Why? Because when we come back, we're going to talk about wine number one, and we're going to have some of that chicken that we talked about. The wine is a Chardonnay from California, or from uh, uh, South America. Uh, it's, I thought it was from California, but it isn't. Alamos is the name of it. You'd think Alamos, it would be from Texas. But no, it's from uh, Argentina, actually, in South America. So when we come back, we're going to try a little of that Chardonnay and a little bit of that chicken, and we'll talk about that. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages here on Wines Du Jour at Max's Filipino Restaurant in Las Vegas. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to start out with a chicken in a salt. That's what they call this chicken that Max's has made world famous since 1945. We're going to have a little bit of that. Take a look at that. It's just gorgeous. And with that, as I mentioned before we went to the break, a Chardonnay uh, from Alamos. And uh, hey, you've got to try it, right? So let's pour a little bit. There's some for you. Thank you. You're welcome. And a little bit for me. Now, when you get a glass of wine poured for you, whether it's at home or you're at a friend's house or you're at a restaurant, what I suggest you do is to swirl the wine around in the glass. Now, you know, if you can't do it holding it up, it's okay. Put it down on the table to keep it from flying all over your, your shirt, you know. But the, do it for about 10 seconds. And the reason that you do it for about 10 seconds is to get all the liquid up the side of the glass, and then you're going to stick your nose right down in that glass and smell it. Here's what we're going to do, like this. Apricot. I don't know if you can smell apricot or not, but apricot and peaches, uh, it's a citrusy flavor. This is a Chardonnay. It's not heavily oaked, which uh, is typical more in uh, California here in the States than in South America. 
So this is really very tasty, Alamos Chardonnay, and you can buy it in retail stores all across the country. Listen to this, Chardonnay, $12 a bottle. Unbelievable. Let's take a little taste and see what you think. What I like about Chardonnay from time to time is the butterscotch taste. This has a little bit of that butterscotch taste to it, which is good. It's not from oak. Uh, it's actually, uh, no, I shouldn't say it's from over oak. It's from oak, but not from being over oak. And so you don't get too much uh, uh, vanilla out of it. That's what you get when you do over oak a wine, regardless of whether it's a red or a white. You get that, uh, that taste of vanilla. Uh, and some people like that, and it's okay. It just kind of depends on the wine. But here, we're going to do this Chardonnay, and we'd like to have it chill. So some people say, oh, oh chill. What temperature would you like to have it? And I'm going to say, well, it should be about 50 to 55 degrees. And most people are a little surprised that I have an answer for that. <laughs> and then their next question is, well, how do I get it 50 or 55 degrees? Well, the answer is, put it in your refrigerator if you're doing this at home. Walk in if you're at a restaurant. And the walk-in and or your refrigerator is about 39 degrees. So when you take it out of that, by the time you open it and pour it, and let it sit for about 10 minutes, it's going to be right up there at 50 to 55 degrees, and it's going to taste its very best. And so when you have your opportunity to taste some of this great Max's chicken and a little sip of this Chardonnay, you're in pretty doggone good company, let me tell you. Now with that, they've got a little ball of rice. Uh, as you can imagine, in Asia, where the Philippines is located, rice is the normal starch that they eat. In America, Potatoes is the normal starch that we eat. We have rice once in a while, but mostly potatoes. Uh, in the Philippines, they have rice 99% of the times, and maybe a little potato once in a while just to do something different. And that starch is an important part of what your daily diet uh, should be. So rice, and they, they cook it very simply, but you notice it's not all gummy and stuck together, uh, which means you've probably overcooked it or done it wrong. And what we like here in America, and the same stands true in the Philippines, is what we call long grain converted white rice. That's the most popular. The second most popular is uh, the wheat rice. And let me tell you, brown rice we call it. It is the best for you to consume, but it's also the tastiest. However, it takes twice as long to cook uh, brown rice than it does white rice. White rice, if you do it properly, in the sauce pot, two times water for one time rice. So if you use a cup of rice, you use two cups of water, or half a cup of rice and one cup of water. Uh, bring it to a boil, put the lid on, turn it down to simmer. 18 minutes later, turn the heat off and let it set for about five minutes. Take the top off at that point. You don't take the lid off while it's cooking. It will not work out quite right. Uh, you take the lid off and you can serve it, it's perfect. Brown rice, exactly the same thing, the same amount of water to rice. You can add a little extra water if you want for brown rice because it's going to cook for about 38 to 40 minutes instead of 18. So you're going to need a little more liquid, although you do have a lid on it, okay? Nothing to it. Very tasty, very good, and uh, very Filipino, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we've got to go to a break. We're going to mix up a little bit of that uh, banana sauce with the Worcestershire sauce and the Tabasco sauce to go with this chicken and have a little field day with this Alamos Chardonnay. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages. Number two now is a little bit unique. You're going to have a little trouble finding it possibly because they didn't make more than about 3,000 cases of it. And by the time you distribute that across the United States, there's not an awful lot around. But it is delicious. And 
It's a, a combination of varietals. I'll tell you a little bit about it. It's called the Lunacy Club. Hey, I didn't name it. The Lunacy Club. And it's the year 2012. And what they have here, uh, it comes to us from Paso Robles, California, incidentally. And if you don't know, Paso Robles is exactly due west of Las Vegas, Nevada. So if you were to get on the road, there isn't one that goes directly that way, but if you were like the crow flies from Las Vegas and head for the Pacific Ocean, about two thirds of the way, you're gonna find Paso Robles. And Paso Robles is known because it's pretty warm there for its red grapes that makes red wine. So what they've done at this Lunacy Club is they've taken a little bit of, uh, of the uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, about 57% is Cabernet Sauvignon, 27% is Spain's most popular red wine called Tempranillo. You may not have heard of it before, but that varietal tastes very, very good. And they've blended that with the Cabernet Sauvignon. Then they've taken 11% uh, of Petit Verdot, very French grape, very tasty, and it's used in blending a lot. And then last but not least, a little Petit Syrah. And I, I'm sure you've heard of Syrah before. And I just want you to know that Petit Syrah is not small Syrah. It's a complete separate grape. Uh, Syrah is the most popular red grape, let's say, in Australia. If you go down there, they don't call it Syrah like we do here in America. They call it Shiraz. <laughs> That's their little uh, lingo talk down there. But Shiraz is the most popular red grape uh, consumed into uh, wine uh, in Australia. So Petit Syrah is a distant cousin to Syrah but it has a different taste and so on. And what they do, when they put the, the other grapes, the Tempranillo and the Cabernet and the Petit Verdot together and add that to it, uh, you get a taste that's really good. So the chef here at Max's has done something that I think is just a perfect concept. He's taken what he calls the Filipino beefsteak, I'm sorry, the sizzling steak caldereta. Caldereta, am I right? In yeah. pronunciation? Okay, caldereta, which really means beef stew. A and this is the Filipino way of doing beef stew. Take a look at it, it's beautiful. And they serve it here on a sizzling hot plate. So when it comes to the table, man, it's, it's ready to eat, but it's nice and warm. Uh, and what they've done is they've taken the beef and the vegetables, uh, severed it in garlic, tomato sauce, a little bit of cheese, some spices, and put it in that sizzling plate and send it out to the customer. Wow. That's got to be good. So let's taste some of this wine. You notice how beautiful and purple color it is. Not just red, but purple. That's a good thing. And that's just because that's the color of the grape. It's a natural thing. So, like I said before, we're going to swirl it around in our glass for about 10 seconds. Take our nose and stick it right down in there and see what we come up with. Oh, you know what? I happen to love lamb, and I'm telling you, this and lamb would be an absolutely perfect thing to blend with it. Uh, really good. Beef stew, absolutely. Lamb, that would be another good thing. Uh, any kind of spicy food, if you were to go, say, as an example, to a Taiwanese restaurant uh, and had some spicy food, this would stand up to that heat or that spiciness, uh, and that's a good thing. And then, of course, uh, this goes well with chicken and it goes well with pork. So that's not a bad thing. If you are able to find this, it would be about $18 uh, in a retail store. And that's a good thing. Have you tasted this at all? Yeah, it's good. I like it. I think like I like every wine here. <laughs> it is good, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Uh, the combination of those varietals are just really uh, a good combination to make an overall good taste. And uh, Petit Verdot, is one of those things that do what we call round off uh, the tail end. Uh, that sounds like a weird thing, but what we're really saying is when we swallow the wine, we can continue tasting it for a few seconds after we've swallowed it. That's what we call a long lingering finish. Kind of interesting, but at the same time, it's smooth. You know, some red wines, Cabernet Sauvignon by itself sometimes kind of heats up your throat. Um, and that's, I don't think, a real good thing. So by adding something like Petit Verdot, uh, you end up rounding off the taste. You eliminate that heat and you increase the taste because of that long lingering finish. Pretty good thing. Beef stew, Max's. Great uh, red wine. 
about $18 a bottle. Got to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the world famous varietal, Cabernet Sauvignon, but not just anyone, a really, really tasty one. It's about $31 or $32 a bottle. It's definitely worth it. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after these messages. Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world. With over 40 million visitors yearly, there are thousands of options for event spaces. So, how do you choose the best location for your next important event? Vegas Life Events, representing some of the best venues on and off the strip. Let us help you design and manage your event. Book online or call Vegas Life Events now. Welcome back. We're talking with Elrica, the manager here at Max's in Las Vegas. And uh, let me tell you, this, this lady, she says, you know, I, I like wine, uh, <laughs> but I don't drink just any kind. I only like good wine. So I said, well, try these if you like them. She likes them. <laughs> that's a good, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> now, this next wine we're talking about is Cabernet Sauvignon, as I told you before we went to the break. But uh, this is um, a, a little bit unique. Let me tell you what it, what I, why I'm saying that. This comes from an area in America that's considered to be the number one area to grow Cabernet Sauvignon grapes and make Cabernet Sauvignon wine, Napa Valley. So the wine comes from Napa, and I have to say uh, it also means it's probably going to be a little more expensive because of Napa name on there. Uh, that's just the way it is, folks. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. But on the other hand, the taste here is exceptionally good. And so what the chef has done is put together something I think is pretty good. He calls it bistec. Bistec just simply means a Filipino beefsteak. Uh, and the beefsteak is very thin sliced sirloin. Uh, he's made uh, some onions and he takes a little bit of lemon juice, soy sauce, and makes a gravy out of it and serves that over with the onions on top. It sounds so simple. It, it is simple. But it's something that we don't see in restaurants, unless you're in a Filipino restaurant. It's a very common dish in the Philippines, so let me tell you what. You need to taste it. It is really very good. So let's try a little bit of this Cabernet Sauvignon. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon is uh, the most popular red grape that people drink all over the world, Cabernet Sauvignon. There you are. And we're going to do the same thing that we always do, is swirl it for about 10 seconds, and then stick our nose down in there and see, we, see what we come up with. Oh, now this smells like full body. I mean, it's going to be, when you put some of this in your mouth, your mouth is going to be full of Cabernet Sauvignon. That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. And that just means that it's probably from someplace like Napa because they don't mess around. They've got the real thing there. And it's 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, which frankly is not all that common. We think because the label says Cabernet Sauvignon and doesn't say anything else, we assume that it's 100% Cabernet. Uh, not the way it works, folks, according to the law. The law says if you want to call it Cabernet Sauvignon, like they did here, it could be a minimum of 75% Cabernet Sauvignon, and then they, the other 25% could be a combination of one or two or three or four or five different varietals added to it. In this case, it's so tasty and so good, it doesn't heat up your throat, it gives you that long lingering finish and gives you a full mouthfeel uh, with the taste of it. Uh, they didn't need to do anything. So let's see what you think. Isn't that That's full it. body? That just fills your mouth with flavor. I really like this one. Now you know that this beef, this tech is going to be very, very tasty just because of the gravy that they've made. You know, gravy's not a bad word. Uh, in the Philippines, they use a lot of different gravies. In America, we used to use a lot of gravies, but as time progressed, when uh, the French methods of doing cooking told us that we're eating too fatty foods, try to cut back on it. So we've had to change the method that we did to try to keep the same taste, but try to take the calories out of it. Uh, so what we learned to do here in America is we learned to reduce 
the broth or the liquid, let's say is uh, beef broth, we reduce it, say, from three cups to a cup and a half. And what you've done is intensify the flavor with that cup and a half, but you've eliminated uh, a cup and a half of water. That's the only thing that can evaporate is water. Nothing else can leave. So you keep the flavor, you lose the water, you intensify the taste, and now when you make a little gravy out of it, it tastes like it used to, but doesn't have all the butter and all the cream and all the other stuff with it. Well, they're doing the same thing in the Philippines, and let me tell you, the gravy that the chef made here to go along with this bistec is really a very, very good thing. I don't know about you, but I think we've had a pretty good time. Have you? I did. I'm really glad that you <laughs> took the time out. I know you're busy here in the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, take the time out to come over and spend a little bit of time with us. It was fun meeting you and talking with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to ask you one more thing about your menu. If you were to pick one item on the menu, just for you personally now, mm -hmm. not necessarily what customers yeah. do, but what you like, what would you pick? <laughs> That's my absolute favorite out of all. Oh, come on. I'm not surprised when you said that. <laughs> That's a very good thing. Well, again, um, this um, uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, I think I told you 31 or $32 uh, in the last segment. It's $36 retail. Find it on sale, or it might be even 38 in some places. That's just the way it is. Search it out, and don't buy one bottle. Buy two or more. Because I'll tell you, one bottle is not going to go around. When you get home and open it up, you're going to keep most of that for yourself and your loved one. And then friends and so on can share the other bottle. That's kind of the way that works. So I want to thank you very much for watching Wines Du Jour. Uh, we've got to, got to go because we're running out of time. I want to say uh, congratulations to Max is coming to the United States and more importantly, coming to my favorite town, Las Vegas, Nevada. So thanks for watching and touche to you. Good luck. Goodbye, everybody. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions <coughs> or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Here at Go Global Realty, we value the relationships with our customers. I'm Michael Ring, I'm the co-owner of Go Global Realty. Wherever you are in the world, you can give us a call at Go Global Realty, and we'll be able to assist you in purchasing real estate in the United States. You can purchase it for an investment property or for personal use. 您好，我是稳盈地产的Ronnie us a call at Go Global Realty. We speak over 12 languages and look forward to helping you in your real estate needs.
Welcome to the Liberati Mansion. Welcome to Under the Vegas Sun, looking at the people, the events, and the news surrounding Las Vegas and the entire Vegas Valley. Hello, I'm Steve Shore. We are live from the Liberace Mansion. The amazing sound of music. Over the years, there have been so many different genres of music. Everybody knows, of course, about the Motown sound. But for a lot of people, what really made a difference was what was called Philadelphia soul music. It had everything to it. On our program today, we'll talk about that with two people very much involved in bringing that sound back once again. You'll meet them and hear an amazing sound later on in the program. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, this is Keith Evans at the Lion Habitat Ranch. We'd like you to come out and visit our ranch. There's 38 lions, a giraffe that paints, ostriches, emus, and birds. We do school tours, general admission, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and behind the scenes tours every day of the week. Besides coming in as general admission, you can also pay extra to help our animals, and you can feed the giraffe. You can feed one of the lions, or you can have Ozzy paint a custom canvas for you. You can also buy Ozzy paintings in the gift shop. While we do our demonstrations at 12 and 2 of Ozzy Painting, all those canvases are available for purchase. In addition to everything you can do here in person, you can find us on the website, lionhabitatranch.org, where you can make your reservations online or buy your paintings online. Thank you very much. Please come. Hi, I'm Visha Calderon, an immigration attorney. Migrating to the United States legally can be tricky and costly. My firm offers fast, professional, and cost-efficient service for you and your family. There's a certain sound that when you hear it, you know it. There's a certain sound that, that when it touches who you are, that, that soul inside, you get all excited. For a lot of people, it's Motown. For a lot of people, it's jazz. Some other people, it's opera. To others, it might be classical music. For me, it was one thing. Philly Soul. I just loved, over the years, Philly Soul. Luckily for me, I became somewhat of a part of it. I was lucky enough in my career to be at a place called WDAS Radio in Philadelphia, the home of the most amazing R&B and soul you could ever, ever find. On our program today, two people are now bringing back that sound right here in Las Vegas, Shelley and Wesley Stevens. Welcome back to our program. Thank you, Steve. By the way, I got to tell you, I've had so many comments about the prayer that you did last week on the show, but I'm, I'm excited about, I am excited about tonight. So, <laughs> latter part of the 60s and the 70s, it was Philly soul. I, I'm sorry, it yes. was Philly it soul. Was hot. <laughs> A lot of people at the time went back and forth between Motown and Philly soul. They were juggling. You know. Back and forth, back and forth. Tell me what Philly soul was to you. What made Philadelphia soul music so unique? Well, Philly soul is a mixture. Of, a lot of Philadelphia soul music is actually a mixture of, believe it or not, a little touch of jazz and classics. Really? Yes, there's a touch of that in there. Of course, it has the R&B, but then you put a spice of jazz with the musical changes, then you put a spice of the classics with the string arrangements and the horns and the 32-piece orchestra. So you got a mixture of kind of everything in there. And there was one sound they were really famous for too. What do we call it? The galloping the gallop. horses. The, really? his, his name oh, yeah. was Larry Washington. See, to me, the percussion, the congas, yeah. yes. the, To me, the one word that tied to Philly soul. What? Funk. Ah. Yeah. Well, it was definitely that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> funk was it. You, you I mean, get away with you it. couldn't get away with it. <laughs> we had a group from Philly, remember? Instant, Instant funk. funk. That's yes, right. that's right. Got my right. mind made up. Right. Got my mind made up. Come on, you can, you can get, get it. it anytime. <laughs> but, you know, when I think of all the groups that were there, hmm. uh, all the groups that were there, one of the groups that immediately comes to mind, Stylistics. Now, the first time you and I met, Yes. You and I met. 
Oh, you walked into the studio at WDAS Radio in Philadelphia, and you were what, 15 years About old? 15 years old, yeah. 15 years old, yeah. and you were singing with this group, mm -hmm. The Stylistics. Right. Big songs. Yes. Big songs. We were very blessed, yes. And you helped write some of those songs. Yes. But your name couldn't be on it because you were only 15 years old. I was a boy. <laughs> <laughs> I, got a, I got a new Cadillac, a new couple, a little couple briefcases. So, yeah. I, so okay, I wrote down names, okay, because names that I remembered, these were guys that I, hung, I, 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 really, I literally hung around with. There's a studio in, in Philadelphia called Sigma Sound. Oh, boy. The, the best producing, in, without a doubt. Yeah. And guys that used to hang there and put it together mm -hmm. were guys like Bunny Ziegler, right. Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff, Tommy Bell and Linda Creed, yep. McFadden and Whitehead, yeah, Norman Wait. Connors, they, Bobby Eli, mm -hmm. we can go on and on. On and on. Yeah. And they all had mm -hmm. that sound. Mm -hmm. And they put together that sound. Was it something, uh, it's a tough question, I know. <laughs> was it something that was inborn within them? Or was it a sound that they learned? It was in the water. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, I think when we came together musically, it, it was just a natural formula. I, you know, it just, it, it's kind of unexplainable, but the formula just kind of fell in place. It, and we would look at each other, you know, and we were like, wow, how did that happen, you know? But, and we were amazed, so tape, record, please. We would record everything that we did. We, we, we never everything. went in nope. without running tape. Nope. Tape was running at all times. And that's where a lot of great songs came from, because we weren't actually sometimes thinking about writing a song. We were just coming together as musicians, uh, singers, and just actually piecing it together as we went along. And by the tape running, we would go back later and format the songs. I was on, actually, I was backstage. I was the voice backstage at the Latin Casino in Cherry Hill, New oh, Jersey. Yes. The first time the spinners rolled out Rubber Band Man, on that stage, that was a hot one. I thought the crowd was going to go <laughs> crazy. <laughs> and that's what happened yeah. with Philly Soul. It would seem to me as though every song that uplifting. came out came higher and higher and higher. Uplifting, yeah. It was, it was and, I, and I wrote down some of the names. These, these are some that I remember. That, okay. Let's okay. see if I can remember. The Intruders. Oh, oh yes. Cowboys, Cowboys and Girls. Girl. Cowboy, uh, Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes, if one of my favorites. By now. <laughs> the Tramps. Uh oh. Disco Inferno. The OJs. <gasps> uh, they had too many. Those. They had way we'll too many. Lou Rawls, Billy Paul. Oh, yes, Mrs. Jones. Oh, without, without, a, without a doubt. You're nailing them all. Stylistics and the Spinners. Hard and on and on. So I did, I did a TV show. With the spinners, the one and only TV show they ever did. I was Felipe the, was there. I was Felipe Wynn was the lead singer of the spinners right. at the time, in the middle of Fairmont Park in Philadelphia. <laughs> was it the park I, I was the voice. I was the I was the announcing voice on that TV show. I was young. I mean, I was a kid back then. It hooked me like nothing ever hooked me before. It was music that touched your soul, and I think that's why it became the Philly soul. It, it, it can never leave. Soul music is, it doesn't mean anything about creed of color or anything like that. Oh, no. It means it's what's, what's in it's here. What's yeah. in exactly. Your soul. It's, exactly. It's what's what it in your soul. And, and it can't leave your soul. Once so, it's touched you, it goes nowhere. So you've been touched by that. You helped lead it with the stylistics and, and the Commodores? Yes, yes. And, and Lionel? Yes. Okay, Lionel, Lionel Richard yes, that Chewy with? Yeah. Yeah, you've helped lead it, mm -hmm. and now you're bringing it back to Las Vegas, aren't you? Absolutely. Aren't you? This Absolutely. audience is the first one to know. You're bringing it back to Las <laughs> Vegas, aren't you? Come to the show. <laughs> it's going to be called Philadelphia Sound of Soul, right? Sound of Soul. Sound of Soul. Yes. And you're going to take all the best and, bring... and put it together. It's going to be hot. And you're going to work with yes. a great band. Yes. A great band. Yes. Great band. And great, great singers. Great, great yes. singers, great people. We love them. They're, they're really, they work hard. When we first met In Demand at the Paris, we just looked at them like, we could do this. <laughs> we can do this. When we saw their style and their professionalism with their steps and their harmonies, and we're like, we need to put this together. Because when Wesley and I were performing on the ship, 
we would have the ship orchestras, they would have their charts and do the Philly sound. But, you know, it was different. Then. Right. You know, it was different. It was different. Feel, they couldn't it, feel the soul because they were for. only reading the charts. Yeah. So now it's amazing to perform with a group of musicians who can feel it without the charts. You know, we've been rehearsing and rehearsing, and it just gets better and better. Yeah, and even though one guy's from Baltimore, Maryland. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right next door. Yeah, right next door. He knows me. He's, he's, guys. he's yeah. still, I guys. mean, you sense that soul that he's yeah. got. close enough. I know. <laughs> He, he, he must have. He drank some of the water. I know. Oh, no he, he, drank some, he must have had a cheesesteak here, here, here or there someplace, you know. But it, but it must make you feel wonderful to bring does. back that sound. It really Because everybody everybody talks about Motown and Motown. There's always been Motown reviews. Right. Of course, we never no, Motown. I mean, yeah, Motown who doesn't like movie. Motown? But, but it's, Four it's, tops, it's a temptation, all approach, the way through. A different approach with Philly International. We, you know, uh, Motown was. A t the 60s, in, in that era, music was a different thing. It was. And it, it's progressed in a positive way. So when we got to Philly International, we kind of went around the block to get around the corner. <laughs> you know, we, but we got to the same place, right? To the Tommy same. Bell and Linda Creed wrote songs that touched your, your soul. And I sat there with them many times writing those songs. That touched your heart. Yes. yes. Campbell, Gamble and Huff, there wasn't a single song they, they produced at Philadelphia International Records that did not touch somebody. Family reunion. Yep. They talk about love, bringing people together. Exactly. That's what, exactly. That's what it's all about, you know? It is what it's I all about. I love music. It's a simple thing, and uh, OJ say that, and they say it well. It's a great song. All these songs mean something. They don't just, when you write a song, it should say something. It should make a statement. It should talk to someone. It should put them in a better place. And that's what Philly Sound is all about. We all can remember songs that touched us when we were kids. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, what, for you, what, 20 years ago when you were a kid? <laughs> Ooh, she but, really loves you. I, I, <laughs> but you remember the words to the song yeah. that touched you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and I can remember every single word to the stylistics, to the temptations, to, to the supremes, to you, you, spinners, you name it. Steve, what amazes us is we will go to Japan or somewhere in the world, and we're singing the song, and they don't speak a bit of English, but they know every, every single, single word. Language. Every yeah. single. Every single lyric. So you brought the band with you today. Yes, yeah. we did. <laughs> and, and we're going to treat the audience, and we're going to take a break for a couple of seconds. When we come back, we're going to treat the audience to this incredible new old sound that you've put together that will be on the stages yes. of Las Vegas and yes. people can come in and come see it all. Come join it. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, more of this wonderful Philadelphia soul music. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Frankie Shinta, downtown's king of entertainment. You're watching Under the Vegas Sun with Steve Shore. Now we've talked about this amazing sound now on our program. It's called Philadelphia Soul Music. And the sound of that soul music gets right into your heart and soul. What is it? How does it sound? Right now, you'll meet the people and the sound that make it happen. They're called Philadelphia Sounds of Soul.
stepping into the show tonight. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take you on a journey down music memory lane. This is the soul of Motown. This is the soul of Philly. Anyway, we're gonna do it like this. as I promised you, uh, an amazing sound. You know, I, I, I grew up in that soul era, and I loved the music of, of so many of the big stars that were there. Hearing it back once again and knowing it's going to be centered right here in Las Vegas is probably the coolest thing. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you, Wesley, for bringing it. And thanks to Philadelphia Sounds of Soul for making it all happen. Until the next time, I'm Steve Shore. Be safe and enjoy life under the Vegas sun. The world of business today is ever changing. What does it take to move that needle forward? Sometimes it's effective communication or an extra voice to be heard or maybe help in turning the right corner. At Consulting America, we provide all of that and more. Get an edge on the competition. Our team offers more than 100 years of business experience, all to help you. For more information, go to consultingamericanow.com or call us at 702-385-5739. Consulting America, developing innovative strategies today.
This has been a presentation of VATV. Buying, keeping, or selling your home is one of the biggest decisions you and your family need to make in your lifetime. Specify a home inspector trusted by the Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. F10 Inspection Services has been serving the Las Vegas real estate industry for many decades, which secures all inspections with a $10,000 honor guarantee. F10 Inspection Services, proudly Asian American. Call 702-374-7377 now. ACTV is proud to be associated with Go Global Realty. Dance in all of Las Vegas. We have the best choreography team. You know, my producer director produced the hit show Splash for 21 years. Right. And he go, he and I go back 35 years. We know each other well. And we just got together and said, let's tell this story. Yeah. Nobody can probably tell it better than we can. So uh, we put the dance. The dance is really the star of the show. Great projection. We have great singers. It's just uh, uh, it was exciting to put it on, and from the reaction we're getting tonight. Uh, just thrilled, thrilled. We hope we can entertain here in Vegas for a long time. I hope. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm Sandy with Sandy Zimmerman's Las Vegas TV. Thank you, Sandy.
true story. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a true story. Nothing, nothing got in or out of this town without Johnny having a piece of it. Right. And they threw in Cuba, they threw in Marilyn Monroe, they threw in everything. Yeah, he was, he was a guy that got around. He called himself, on his business card, he called himself a strategist. Yeah. So he, he laid low and he didn't, you know, get out there too much. But, uh, yeah, so I kind of tell the story of how the mob built Vegas and how Vegas took down the mob. Yeah, well, you make the connections and then the dancers come out. Aren't and they then fabulous, the dancers? Oh, oh they are fantastic. Oh, man. Original uh, and, and routines. Then of course, and then, of course, we have Michael Franzis, who is the real-life mobster, ex-mobster. Ah. He uh, worked for the uh, Colombo family back in the day, and so there's just so much for everybody. It's very eclectic, you know, and uh, you know, the music is very hip, the dancing is outstanding. Right. And, uh, and so was the audience tonight. My gosh, the audience was beautiful. Oh, everybody loved it. They stood up for you. Yeah, yeah. That was great. Now, have you been in any shows before? Uh, as an act, not as an actor. Uh, from 1971 to 84, I was, or no, from 71 to uh, just recently, I was a celebrity impersonator. Oh, really? Uh, the past 20 years, I impersonated uh, Jay Leno. So I hosted, oh, Leno. I hosted Legends in Concert. That's a switch from mobsters to Jay Leno. He's Italian, he's Italian, so you know. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> but uh, so I hosted Legends in Concert for a few years and uh, did a lot of corporate work. And then uh, somebody suggested me to Jeff Butash. He was looking for uh, this Johnny Roselli, and he saw me and said, Got him! <laughs> Connecting everything together, and you were very important because we had to know why we were seeing each scene. Yeah, it, 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 it kind of my character is the thread that ties all of right. the, the progression of the story, so to speak. So yeah, it's yeah. Fun. It's fun. Anything else you want to mention? We're here at the Plaza Hotel right now. We're only doing Wednesday through Saturday, uh, but we're going to be adding more days on here in a few weeks. Uh, but tonight is our grand opening. Right. And uh, with all of the media and press here, it was just it was really awesome. You guys were a great crowd. Thank you so, so much. And folks, come see us at the Plaza, 7.30, on Wednesday, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Come on, Dan. <laughs> If you say no, then we're going to have to make it one off and you can't refuse. <laughs> oh, thank you so thank much. You, I'm Sandy with Sandy Zimmerman's Las Vegas TV. Let's see it. Right. 
I'm doing shows that have include opera type of stuff. Uh, but uh, I really love a repertoire of Mario Lanza and uh, Andre Bocelli and Josh Groban. You know, it's a little more modern because um, that's where there's a little bit more audience appreciation, unfortunately. Right. But that's the market. You have to yeah. Tonight. Yes, yes. There was a little segment of uh, with Yeah, the Nessun Dorma, which is. Yeah. When he sang that for the uh, opening ceremonies of the Olympics, it suddenly became a song that everybody wanted to sing, ah, including yeah. Aretha Franklin. So it's, it's become a pop song. Everybody's doing it, but they don't do it in the key oh. that makes us, that the audience is going nuts with the high note at the end. Oh, right. Because you can't sing it. That's very difficult to do. Yes, well, I did Just see. Because a handful of tenors can actually do that. <laughs> I did see Pavarotti. I had this, he was invited, and that was fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And I enjoyed tonight because it had everything the opera and the dancing and the mob. Yeah. And yeah. they even mentioned Marilyn Monroe and Cuba. Yes. <laughs> yes, I sure hope that the word gets out within the great people to this show because it, I think it is the hit show of Vegas. It's right. Still show and uh, it's going to be around for a long time. Oh, I think so. Yeah. It was fantastic. But thank you so much. I'm Sandy thank with Sandy, Sandy. Zimmerman's Las Vegas. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy. an opening at the Plaza Hotel, a mob story, and here's one of the mobsters. You said your name was Gino? Gino Venezia. Wow, you Don't have... forget it. Yeah. Understand, never forget that <laughs> name. And Speak it... of Gino Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do look Italian. A little bit, Sicilian. You were telling me about uh, some other parts that you have in uh, your heritage. Yeah. yeah, my mom's from Panama, and her dad came from Greece. Oh. And I just told you I'm part Jewish, too. Yeah. Yeah. 20%. Yeah, throw everything in. That's in the wallet. Yeah. And what uh, part do you play in uh, a mob story? Uh, mainly I'm a character. Me and my partner, uh, Uber. we are characters in there. Uh, I used to dance. I used to dance in Splash a oh, long time. Yes. But this show, uh, I'm 63 now, so just let well, me... you look good. Jim, what? Thank you, daughter. Are you a good it, gangster or a bad gangster? It just depends on how you want me to <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, no, we're we're a fun gangster. Yeah, it's all act. It's all it's all basically uh, an act. A lot of fun. Uh, yeah. No one no one dies. Yeah. Oh, good. I like that. But it's a good show. Great dancing. Uh, Mike Frenzies tells his story about what he's uh, done in the past. Uh, no holds bar. He Ooh. ask him a question and he'll answer it, wow. or he'll take the fifth. <laughs> and he's good at that. Uh, but then we have uh, Marcella that um, uh, actually navigates the show. The show oh, throughout. Nice. So he's very, very good at it. We got uh, an opera singer, uh, very good as well. And uh, Jeff Kutaj put together one, one hell of a right. Italian show. I can't wait. We're waiting to get in now. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm Sandy with Sandy Zimmerman's Las Vegas show. San sweet little angel. You'll do everything to protect your bundle of joy. But did you know that using an ordinary baby bottle puts your baby at risk? Does your baby bottle do this? And this, even this. Switch to the amazing Zero Leak Bottle with Leak Proof Nipple. The only patented nipple that can keep your baby safe from accidental drowning, choking, tooth decay, and ear infection. It is equipped with an anti-colic device which protects your baby's tummy. Its wedge collar makes feeding preparation easy. The amazing Zero Leak Bottle is proudly produced in the USA by Mays Corporation. Order now! Call 702-888-888. 
1798 or visit macecorporation.com. Here at Go Global Realty, we value the relationships with our customers. I'm Michael Ring, I'm the co-owner of Go Global Realty. Wherever you are in the world, you can give us a call at Go Global Realty and we'll be able to assist you in purchasing real estate in the United States. You can purchase it for an investment property or for personal use. Give us a call at Go Global Realty. We speak over 12 languages and look forward to helping you in your real estate needs. I'm Sandy with Sandy Zimmerman's Las Vegas TV and I'm at the opening of the Thunderbird. Yes, Thunderbird. I remember it. And now we have a new a reimagined Thunderbird. And I have the owner. My name is Elon Borodetsky. Yes, and it was a hotel with a bar and you made it into something really beautiful. So yeah, um, the property was uh running bad and we purchased that uh, about three years ago. We modeled that, we opened a wedding chapel, bar, the lounge, showroom as you can see over here, and a boutique hotel. It was yep. a long journey, mm -hmm. but it was worth it. Right, and this is a big showroom. How big is it? Uh, it's about 6,000 square feet, about 350 people. Yeah, you could have all sorts of events and parties. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, bands, uh, all kinds of parties, bar mitzvahs, but mitzvahs, weddings. Yeah, and, uh, even entertainers. You can have a, a lot show of here. Yes, we had famous people here. This is the old history of Vegas is coming here. Right. Uh, we had Vince Neil actually from Monthly Crew over here. So oh. A few big names over here. Really? And I like your pictures you have of the old Thunderbird. Yes. Now you're the new Thunderbird. Well, we kept the original in and we just upgraded it a little bit because it was run down. Yeah, and you have a nice porch outside right on Las Vegas Boulevard. That's really nice. Yes, we, pre we try to keep the integrity of the place, the old bones, the old Vegas, and keep it more in the retro look of today, what people need, without walking through two miles of a lobby in a casino. Right. Well, this is more intimate, more friendly. Absolutely. Yeah, and how many rooms do you have? We have 100 rooms here, 150 rooms at the next door. So altogether we have 250 rooms. So you could get big groups. Or you can get absolutely you, big groups, yeah. and big venues, and conferences. And I like your dance floor. Dance That's floor a amazing. big dance floor. Very good dance And you have outside by the bar, and in here too. Yes, we do. Place went through a major face lift. And we used everything top of the line. Yeah, well, thank you so thank much. You so I'm much. Sandy with Sandy Zimmerman's Las Vegas TV. Thank you. Welcome, I'm Sandy with Sandy Zimmerman's Las Vegas TV. And I'm at the opening of the Thunderbird. And I have Kelly Jones. Now, I just met you the other day. Yes, we did. We saw each other at the Epicurean Charitable Foundation. Now. And this is one of your, your groups. Yes, my, my management company operates all the food and beverage property-wide here at the Thunderbird. So I have the Thunderbird Lounge, the showroom, uh, and we do activations all over the property. Now, this is very interesting. 
we're, we're outside right on Las Vegas Boulevard and it's lovely people can sit out here they can there's so much to do here at the Thunderbird now yeah we, we took over in June and tonight is our grand opening party we did a lot of work on renovating the space changing all the menus changing the beverage menu really hiring and training new staff so we've got a gaming tavern which is really the only gaming between the stratosphere and Fremont Street we have a full restaurant bar restaurant bar menu we have an incredible showroom uh, where we do live bands and activations we have comedy nights uh, we do full buyouts of the property because we have a hundred hotel rooms as well so it's really pretty special property yeah and what type of gambling here uh, so it's bar top gaming so oh, um, right. you know obviously Slots, anything from here, yeah. poker uh, black eye uh, yeah oh that's terrific Jack, yeah. that's fun people just love that yeah, and it's it's fun because there's so much to do here. You can come in. You know, we don't take ourselves seriously, so we programmed a lot of fun. We've got a pool table. We've got beer pong tables. Uh, we've got the gaming at the bar. So it's it's a good time. So we're at the party, and they're serving, and we're taking a tour to see the wedding chapel and the place. It's so different now. They renovated it. Yeah, I mean, Ilan, the owner, put a lot of money into renovating it. The wedding chapel does over a thousand weddings a year. The hotel sells out every weekend. And during the week, it's uh, you know really great uh, that we've got everything for you. We've got lodging, we've got food, we've got beverage, we've got gaming, we've got weddings. It's a one-stop shop here in downtown Las Vegas. So you're always helping people. You're with the Epicurean Foundation charity. and. Well, that's are you that's, here? This is your client? That, that's a labor of love, certainly. Epicurean Charitable Foundation. We founded that in 2001, so that's a labor of love. Uh, we've been going 17 years strong. Uh, only been involved here about five, six months. And, but you had uh, nothing to do, so you had to... You know, it's just fun, <laughs> you know, right? Uh, I get to do, you know, my favorite thing in the world is great food with great wine and great people. I get to parlay that into a career, so I'm very blessed. Yeah, and you're in a great business because that's exciting. What can you do with this new business? How can well, you create a new business? Evolving, so I like to be a student of my craft, which means I go out and eat and drink in a lot of places and basically see what I love the most and get to recreate yeah. it myself. And how is it changing now? Um, well, I think uh, the consumer is much more educated on what they're eating and drinking. So I think people are going, you know, quality over quantity. Anything else you want to mention? No, please come down to the Thunderbird and see us. We've got great food, great drink. You can get married here, you can have a room <laughs> here, and you can play and gamble here. You can do everything Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Almost. <laughs> well, we're, we're showing, you know, great sports bar too. We're showing the World Series tonight. Well, terrific. Welcome, I'm Sandy with Sandy Zerus Las Vegas TV. And I'm at the opening of the Thunderbird. Yes, Thunderbird, that's what I said. The name from back in the 80s and 90s. And I have the Royal Chapel, the lady who owns it. And your Petrov, what is your final name? My first name is Petrov, P-E-T-R-A, and my last name is Dor, D-O-E-R-R. -R. Yeah, and you are the owner here at the Wedding Chapel. I'm a partner at the Wedding Chapel. And, and we remodeled everything and it looks beautiful and inviting and it's a modern clean look for Las Vegas. We're excited to be here. Yeah, now you're standing by a tree. Now this is supposed to be a very old tree. It's a about 60 year old Modelo pine tree. It was used to be in the courtyard of the Thunderbird Hotel and when the new owner took ownership in 2012, he decided we're going to build a chapel around it, we're going to keep it and call it the Tree of Love. So you built around it? We built around it. <laughs> Don't cut, off, cut out the tree. You no, it's keep growing. It. It's still growing and when the wind comes in you can hear a chime. It's very nice. It's creaks. Well, this is your chapel, so the tree is part of the wedding ceremony. Sure I've never is. seen that before. I think that's very unique. We don't have anything like it in Las Vegas. Yeah, and they stand by the tree? They stand in front of the tree, so they see the tree, and the ministers come, come from the side. Oh. And we take a lot of pictures before and after. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. The tree is long living, and you hope that the wedding will be uh, successful and happy. We hope that everybody's love is going to grow as much as the tree is growing. Oh, that's good. And now, how did you get in this business? 
Oh, I've been a wedding planner since over 16 years, and most of my clients come from Europe. You can hear my accent, I'm from Germany. Oh. And uh, I've always been a passionate about the wedding business in Las Vegas and a big advocate for it. And I met the owner, Ilan, beginning of the year, and we just clicked and we decided to move oh. forward together. Yeah, that's a wonderful business. Everybody's excited and happy, and it's such a good time when you're getting